We have very great results with the children with autism. It's very high success rate and there is no other medicines for their conditions. You know, there is no medicine for autism kids. Kids cannot lie. They hate the procedures which they are going through here. They cannot lie that they imagine that after stem cell treatment they feel better. There is a clear result of the stem cell treatment and it makes our work special. In September of 2019, I met seven-year-old Matt and his mother, Amanda. Matt is diagnosed with autism. I also met four-year-old Jax with his parents, Mike and Ashley. Jax is also diagnosed with autism. While both families were there at the exact same time, they did not know each other. The funny thing was when we got off the plane, we saw Amanda and we both looked at each other like, well, what the hell would she be here for? Is she going to? We got off the airplane onto this like shuttle to the airport and I saw this other American family with a son and then I just in my head, I was like, they must be here for the same reason. And then it kind of like, a, it was kind of like a movie then like the whole shuttle filled up and then I like never saw them again. Understandably, some parents are nervous giving fetal stem cell therapy to their child for the first time. Oh, I was still, we were I didn't think I was gonna be able to pitch it to her. Yeah. Because I'm the one who found it, just randomly Googling, like I said, Googling stuff about autism and stumbled upon your, your research and your video, your, the first yeah. documentary. So then once And then I'm like, yo, we're going. I thought for sure she was gonna be like, no chance. Yeah. <laughs> like, Once he sent it to me, then I started looking up scholarly articles and, you know, started printing stuff, but it, it's, it's hard because MCEL really only has one article. That was the only article that I could find from them. And then I couldn't really find, there wasn't, there was barely like any research, anything done, especially in the US because of the controversy. I'm a nurse anesthetist, so I provide anesthesia to children and adults in the hospital setting. So I like took that one article to work and like I asked like a couple of the docs that I work with who like I trust their opinion. And they were like, why not? I was a mess the whole time. Like my stomach was just eating itself. I'm like, what the hell did we get ourselves into? I was still sitting in the chair researching stuff yesterday because I was like so nervous. Yeah. Like I'm like, you know, you don't know. You really don't know what they're injecting here. I encouraged these two families to meet so they can remain in contact once they returned back to the States. Well, what we're hoping to get is better communication back and forth. Um, less of like the outbursts and kind of that emotional impulse control where he's not, doesn't go from like 1 to 100 in a second. Mm -hmm. Mommy, starts him mommy, I will already left. No, we're not leaving yet. And then, you know, maybe in school that he can God, take more I'm information and be, just be more successful in school. Gone. So Jackson just turned four years old. Mm -hmm. He started showing signs of aggression about 18 months mm -hmm. from that, from you know, from birth to 18 months, absolutely normal development, uh, met all his milestones appropriately. And then about 18 months, we started no noticing like a speech regression, like he was saying, mama, dad, you know, a handful of words. And then he stopped. And mm -hmm. the more we dug into it, it, he ended up being diagnosed with autism. I guess about two and a half, we finally got our diagnosis mm -hmm. after waiting for about six months for a doctor's appointment. Um, from then, we did speech. They recommended occupational therapy. And then uh, we started school about three years old. He's in an autism preschool program. And there he gets speech OT, PT. Um, I guess the biggest thing is that he's nonverbal. He has a device he, he pushes to use to talk. Dad, mom, 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 poppy. Dad, mom, 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 poppy. <laughs> Who is it? Dad, mom, 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 poppy. Um, but our hopes were just to give him, you know, a normal life to kind of bring him out of this cage that he's in so that he can speak and communicate and have somewhat of a normal life. Both children received M-Cell's autism protocol. Several months later, I started receiving text messages from both families. Jackson, who is that? Elmo. Elmo. I love Woo. you. Yeah. <laughs> Two years later, in 2021, both families decided to meet at M-Cell together for a second round of therapy for their children. 
It's like mind boggling. It still doesn't even feel real at this point. Like we've been to there twice now. We've seen amazing results twice. How long was it after the therapy that Jax started speaking for the first time? A week, maybe? I want to say the first, well, was I think the first thing we saw, right, was a teacher said that they, they put him in wagons in school and they'll drag him like through the hallway, like in the wagon. And I think he saw an owl, right? And mm -hmm. he said like, he said like an owl sound. He went like, whoo, whoo, like that and pointed at the owl. And he had never done anything like that ever. And that was like, we were back for days, like four days, five days maybe. And that was like, it's funny that at that time that was a gigantic deal. Now, like he talks so much, like it's like, can you be quiet for a second? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. Hey, but bad butt in the world. Hey, always bad butt in the world. This is yo, baby. Ooh, wonderful. What is the wonderful? Oh, yay. Oh, I want any more money. Their bond is pretty strong and stronger than it was, you know, because Jackson's doing so much better. You know what I mean? That they play together and. They talk, or I miss my brother, I miss Logan, and stuff like that. So we've only told like, I mean, friends and family and stuff now, and like we're, I'm, I'm probably more vocal about it than she is with telling people because I just feel like it should be out there. But of the people you have told, what have been their responses? His primary, his primary doctor at Chop the Autism. Oh, primary. the developmental. Her face got beat red when I told her. She was. She was so mad, mad, like beat red mad. Yeah. She was so mad. <clears throat> like basically was sent, like, that was very dangerous what you did with Jackson and like, there's not enough like study on this, like. We brought the paperwork to show her and she was kind of like, what is this? Like, what do you mean you went there? How could you do this to your child? This is unsafe. And she was like, maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's why he's doing better. Like she didn't really yeah. want to say like. She that, was, yeah. she said like he's <clears throat> grown older and he's been doing therapy and he's been in school and yes, that, those are all contributions to And I'm like success. arguing with her, because I'm like, well, yeah, but he came back from M-Cell, and in one week, we were seeing results like a light switch went off, you know, or went on, should I say. And she just didn't want to hear, well, that's from this, and that's from therapy, and blah, blah. I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. <clears throat> We've been doing therapy for months and months and months, and it's just has been like this. And then it goes like that. Poopy your pants and poopy your pants and poopy Pants, it could be your pants. I love the pants. Mom, Mom, she says she's good to go. I mean, just immediately, I mean, the language communication was so much better. Um, he started sleeping through the night, which he had never done before. In his own room. In his own room. And so going from three to four word sentences, which is what we were used to. I mean, now he's talking in complete sentences and talking with his brothers and he's happier. Um, just, I mean, we're able to have a more normal dialogue with our son, which we had never done before. So, and then just getting back a few months ago, I mean, we just saw another big increase. And so um, it's been it's been a monumental difference from what it was a couple years ago. And it's hard to sometimes remember, like, you know, this is what our life was like before. Um, but, you know, we have friends and, therapist and uh, who remind us and I mean it's just been amazing how much better he is um, you know after those two treatments so I live three houses down the street and I was out in my yard the other day and Matt came whizzing by on his bike had his helmet on I says he says hi grandma and I said hi where are you going he says oh I'm riding my bike to swim team and I mean that's that's not something that would have ever been on the radar screen couple of years ago. I'd say like after the first one, he went to be able to like follow like maybe one step, two step, like right. first do this, then do this, Matt. And you know, we felt like that was an improvement. And then even since we got back, it's like, okay, Matt, you need to do this, 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 and this. And it's like, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is huge. Yeah. So get your jammies on, brush your teeth, clean up your room and make your bed. I mean, and no problem before impossible, never would have happened. So. Yeah. As Matt has improved, his relationships with his brothers have improved, and our relationship has improved. I've noticed his emotions are more regulated. The biggest thing with the stem cells is his language, the way that he's able to explain things. It, things just kind of seem to be clicking. Mommy, Mom, it's this spread. Yep, and when does it come? You know, it's not just the child who's making the improvements, it's everyone 
in their sphere improves when they improve. Certainly not, not like it was before, so um, it's just been a it's been a godsend for sure. Screaming, meltdowns, hitting, those kind of things have just slowly melted away. And I don't think Matt ever had a slumber party, actually slept over to a friend's house until like about a year and a half ago after the first round of styles. And I, mean, I remember being so nervous, like, gosh, I hope he doesn't like, you know, do something crazy and parents are gonna hate us the next day. And I remember talking to him the next morning, like, it was great, Matt was awesome and no problems at all. And so, and then since then we've had tons of sleepovers and I mean, he just is treated like a normal kid and it's been fantastic. So, and that never happened before, literally, so. I've been working with Matt since um, 2016, and when we started, his gap between the kids that were his age and the stuff that he was doing, the gap was really big. Um, when he first started, we were working on just simply connecting two dots. Um, I asked him to write his name, and that was he drew me this line when I said, Matt, write your name, and he wrote that. And then I wasn't sure if he understood what I meant by write your name, so I said, Matt, I said, can you write Matt? And then he did the dots. So two different prompts. First was a line, first was dots. Because he, he knew that this was not what I wanted, but he still didn't know what I wanted. So he changed the line to dots. Just your name, buddy. Last name. and he stays on task. You saw him for a whole hour. He doesn't get out of his chair. He's like, what's next, what's next? It's so great to see how it impacts everyone's life. Mine included. <laughs> when I first met Matt, he was, I would say, minimally vocal. And uh, he was non-restrainable, would be the word. We trapped him in my office and he was all over the place, jumping. I mean, just really kind of oblivious to what was around him, uh, kicking, a lot of screaming. What has happened the best for Amanda is she is no longer riddled with guilt. She was so covered in guilt when I met her that every second she compulsed on finding a solution. While she couldn't sleep, raising three boys, all she did was keep trying to find answers. So then it got to a point where they said, Matt can't be in the same class as this twin. And it broke her heart and it just ramped her up, not in anger, but I am gonna find a solution. And uh, I think she no longer has guilt. Yeah. I think she feels like she fixed it. I, I feel like we're really close. Yeah, I feel like we're really close. I went there the first time with Matt and he got treated and I thought, I just traveled across the world and I didn't get treated. <laughs> so when I went the second time, um, not only did Matt get treated, but I got treated and I took our older son, Sean, and he got treated. Sean, for years, had been kind of dealing with a, stomach issues and we've been just kind of battling this issue. Anytime he got overheated or overrun, he would just get sick. And so the three of us were there. We all got treated in the same room. So before I got these, the stem cells in the Ukraine, what happened is I would usually have a stomach pain at least once a week, and I'm better now. I think that's because the stem cells have been really helping a lot. We haven't had any issues since he, he got hasn't back. hasn't had a single issue all summer, which is probably the first summer in his entire life where we haven't had any stomach pains or issues or getting sick, so um, it's been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And it was great for you because he, I mean, Amanda's yeah. had some elbow pain and some hip pain, and I remember talking to her on the phone like just a couple days there it's like literally my elbow pain is gone like I can't feel it anymore and my hip feels way better and I'm like you gotta be kidding me no way so yeah. it was yeah I, mean, I was blown away when she told me that over the phone so because she's had this elbow pain for I mean years now mm -hmm. so and hip pain as well so it's like it's literally gone so it was pretty awesome yeah I go to school now I got 100 percent on my spelling test when children with autism are treated with fetal stem cells, they receive a wide array of immunological-related stem cells injected intravenously, as well as neuronal and neurological-related stem cells injected subcutaneously. In addition, neurological-related stem cells are also injected intranasally, allowing a more direct delivery into the brain. 
If you are a parent with a child with autism or know of a family with a child with autism and you are asking yourself why you have never heard of this technology, the reason you may have never heard of it is because between 2011 and 2022, MSL has only treated 643 children with autism with only 107 of those children being from the United States. MCEL statistics of efficacy in treating autism from 2011 to 2018 resulted in an efficacy rate of 75.6%. But due to advancements in this technology, from 2019 to 2021, their efficacy rate increased to 86.1%. Efficacy in treating autism is primarily measured based on parents' feedback covering these categories, and since 2019, also measured using the Autism Treatment Evaluation Checklist Scale. MCEL's efficacy statistics are constantly being updated. If you would like to receive a copy of their latest statistics, or just want to ask me a question about what I have learned about this technology while closely following it for the past decade, feel free to email me at eric at ericmarola.com. To stay up to date on my progress researching this technology, subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow on Facebook, or sign up to my mailing list at ericmarola.com or stemcellsmovie.com. Also, don't miss the God Sells podcast series, where I have candid conversations with people from all over the world who have received fetal stem cell therapy. All links are in the description below.